Everyone wants to feel desired by the person they have genuine interest in. I think pretty much all of you, if not all of you, can agree with that statement, okay? And I think that as women, you really understand or that really resonates with you because who wants to be in a relationship with a man where she feels very replaceable, where she doesn't feel like he's truly into her. Like one of the common things I come across in long-term relationships or even more so in marriages is women having an issue where they feel like the only time their man wants to show them affection is when he wants to sleep with them, right? And that makes her feel very devalued and not truly desired for who she is. And so when we understand that this is a natural thing for anyone to want, I think we have, to, we have to accept the reality that it's being forgotten on the flip side, okay? And what I mean by it's being forgotten on the flip side is as much as a woman understands and may express her desire to feel desired, a lot of women are not embracing the fact that the man wants that as well, right? And so there's a lot of men married in relationships or just through the dating process who don't get that kind of energy from a woman that they're interested in and that leads them to checking out, that leads them to maybe even choosing a different woman to be with because she is showing them more desire. And I'm a big believer in even if this man is pursuing you and you feel like he should be the one leading in that way, you have to make sure you're showing up and expressing and showing desire so he feels that from you, okay? So I want to give you some very specific steps you can take on how you can make a man feel desired, how you can make him feel wanted. Now, some of these steps are, are can be applicable no matter what phase of dating you're in. Some of them may be more specific to marriage, things of that nature. It may depend on what you personally believe is appropriate or inappropriate, but I'm just giving you a general overview of ways to make a man feel desired, okay? So one of the easiest ones you can do and implement to make that man feel desired and wanted is compliment him and flirt with him. Now, I've said this in several of the videos before where, you know, I remember coaching a, a married couple and the husband would say how whenever he would go on the streets, he would always get all these compliments from random women, right? He was a good looking dude. He had no problem getting the attention of women. But he said, despite all the compliments he was getting from people, he couldn't seem to get a compliment from the one woman he wanted it from the most. And that was his wife. And for her, she had this mentality of, well, I've, I've already told him many times before he's attractive or I don't want it to go to his head or he already hears it enough from other people. And it's like, listen, you cannot let that way of thinking get in the way of making sure that every now and then you give that compliment. Okay. Now, I already hear some of you saying, well, they don't compliment us <laughs> or, or they're not doing their job when it comes to that. One, this video is about what y'all can do, right? And let me just make something clear, because I do sometimes see comments from women saying, oh, you're always telling the women what they have to do to make the man feel wanted and all this stuff. The thing is, I'm trying to equip you with the skills that's going to bring more success to you. And when you understand how to use these things, not just for the sake of a healthier, harmonious relationship, but it's going to give you, I hate to say it like this, because this is not really the point of it, but it does give you more power. It, it does allow you to get more out of situations and you realize. Now, some of you may say, well, I've done some of these things before and I only got used and abused. Okay, the issue wasn't what you were doing, it's who you were doing it for. So don't confuse what dealing with the wrong man is versus what doing the right things for the right man is. I hope I said that correctly. All right? You, you have to understand, it doesn't change the fact that these are great steps to take. But yes, the wrong man is not going to uh, be as responsive to it or, or is not going to pour back into you the way that you need. And that's how you're going to be able to tell he's not the right guy. Anyways, let's get back to compliments. So... And this is hitting my spirit, so I have to say it. One of the big reasons why a lot of women struggle with complimenting a man, flirting a man, is because of your fear of vulnerability. And the reality is that being affectionate, flirtatious, complimenting, it's a vulnerable thing to do. 
One of the reasons why it's a vulnerable thing to do is because there's always the, the thought of rejection, at least when we're doing it within the getting to know phase or just seeing someone in passing, things of that nature. But even in relationships, even in marriage, there is a wall up that is not allowing you to open up in that way and understand that it's not even about how they're going to respond. It's about pouring that kind of energy into your partner. And, and yes, it can pay off in a lot of great ways. So you have to recognize when your struggle to flirt or any of the things I'm going to mention on this list is due to the walls you have up because there's things you need to resolve all right, and heal from. But outside of that, again, giving compliments, flirting, very powerful. But I have to be very specific in saying compliments in general are great, but you do want to give compliments that are about the physical or that, that lean towards showing there's an attraction there. Because I think one of the things that a lot of women do not consider is that a fear from men is that the woman is not really attracted to me, not really into me. She's just here for what I provide, or she's just here for other reasons outside of a genuine desire for who I am as a man. And so that's one of the reasons, and I'm not saying this makes it excusable, but one of the reasons why some men are so quick to rush into intimacy is because they want validation that you are actually genuinely attracted to them. Okay, which is why physical compliments, right, the flirting in that nature is going to be very good. Now, if you are a woman who, if we're talking about the dating phase and you are waiting till marriage, right, which is a wonderful thing, then of course we have to be careful because we don't want to like create too much temptation that makes it more difficult for the both of you to stay on that path. However, outside of that, Yes, you, I, I think it's extremely important to understand you, you have to throw some of that in there as well. Um, and just make an effort because sometimes maybe you just naturally haven't found something that gave you a reason to give a compliment. I mean, let's face it, that happens sometimes. But I think looking for ways that you can insert compliment here and there every so often is a wonderful, beautiful thing to do. All right. So now here's another huge one that I had to talk about early on in this list. And again, certain things will apply to certain relationship dynamics. So this next one is initiating intimacy. And I want to add on to that, welcoming him home with a kiss. All right. So let's start with the welcoming him home with a kiss. Of course, that's only going to apply to those who actually live together, right? But one of the things that I have seen in all my years of doing this is that there are so many couples together who don't show each other love, desire, warmth when they come home, okay? Now, again, I understand some of y'all may say, well, he should be doing that for us too. Of course, if I was speaking to the men, I would tell them the same thing. But as you as a woman, if you are living with a man, ask yourself, when he comes home, do I show him love? Do I show him desire? Do I show him that I'm happy he's here? You know, there, there are some women who are upset that their man is not home more often. And again, I'm not making excuses or validating a guy who is staying away from being home with, with his woman. However, if the home is not a happy home, how do we expect him to want to be there? How do we expect anyone to gravitate to something that doesn't exude or give positive energy, love, desire, things of that nature. So I think it's important that we create a home environment that gives that energy. It gives someone the reason to want to be home, to want to be with their partner because that's where they feel loved, that's where they feel safe, that's where they can open up, so on and so forth. So practicing, if you're not doing it, welcoming him home with a kiss is a beautiful thing, a hug, something. I know after a while it can become very um, robotic, but to me, that's still better than not doing it at all, all right? Let's at least try. Now, let's shift over to initiating intimacy. Now, I can tell you, when, when I've sat down with married couples, one of the most common issues is a lack of intimacy in marriage. 
And then even for those couples where maybe intimacy isn't technically lacking, many of them or many of them still have a situation where the man wishes the woman would initiate more. All right. And her reluctance or her unwillingness or whatever's going on that causes her to not initiate more can start to have a negative effect on him. Because again, for a lot of men, it's not simply about the in intimacy of laying down with you. It's feeling desired by you. It's feeling wanted by you. Okay. And when someone else in, in certain situations that have gone left, when that man is feeling that energy, that desire from another woman, that can draw that man to that woman. Of course, we all agree it's not the right thing to do, but this is what happens in reality, okay? And so that's why I believe it's important that we fortify our homes with, again, that love, that desire, and one of those ways is to initiate intimacy. Now, also consider this. There's a lot of times where for men, they're finding themselves constantly being rejected when they attempt to initiate intimacy with their woman. Because the reality is that for a woman, it's not simply about if I'm if I have a desire right now. It's is she in a mo is she is she in the right place mentally and emotionally to want to engage physically? Okay, and unfortunately, men aren't always the greatest at reading or understanding or being in tune enough to know when is maybe a good time. And for some people, it just seems like it's never a good time. With that said. This is why I say to women, you know when you're in a good mood, okay? You know when you are more open to doing things. So rather than waiting for him to figure that out, that's when you should go make it happen. Now, some of y'all may be thinking, if I make it happen, I won't be in a good mood anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, because some of y'all ain't enjoying doing the do with your partner, unfortunately. And that's a whole different issue. We got to make a whole different video for that. However, and if that's the case, we need to get to the bottom of why it's not enjoyable and how we can make that better, right? But aside from that, yes, it, it, for you to, to at least every now and then making it, take, the, to take the initiative to create and engage and initiate that intimacy, that's going to be a great thing. And that's definitely going to make him feel more wanted and desired by you. All right, so let's keep this thing going. And another great way and very easy way to make a man feel wanted and desired is to ask his opinion on things and be willing to listen and consider his input, okay? So I'm sure many of you have, many of you have heard, like, men tend to want to be fixers, okay? So you'll have this conflict at times where a woman is... In a, in a space where she just wants to vent. She doesn't need fixing. She just wants to vent, right? But that man's natural inclination is to want to fix. And one of the things I, I tell couples is maybe coming up with a, a safe word or, or a cold word to let him know this is just a venting session. I don't, I don't need your input on this. I don't need you trying to fix nothing. I just need you to sit, listen, console, rub my back, make me feel good, whatever, right? So... Um, you come up with that word. It could just be, hey, I'm just here to vent. It could be other words you want to use, whatever. Anyways, understanding that he still has a natural desire to want to fix because that makes him feel valued. That allows him to show up in your life in a way that says, I got your back and that I, I know that I'm looking out for our best interests and that I'm capable of leading in this way. So I think it's, it's, also important for a woman to understand that when there are opportunities for him to either fix or give input, bring that to him. Now, again, we're not saying you, you have to throw everything at this man. It's going to depend on the dynamics, what's going on, what he has on his plate, all these different things. But I do think that, yes... It's going to be good because it shows a level of respect. That's number one. Understand this. When you just do things on your own independently, let's flip it for a second. Think about, some of you may have experienced this or have seen this, or just, just picture it. You're in a relationship with a man, and that man does not come to you about anything. 
He doesn't consult with you about any decisions. He just goes and does what the hell he wants. How's that going to make you feel? It will make you feel devalued, okay? It will make you feel some kind of way towards him, all right? And it can create a level of conflict. So the same thing can happen in reverse. If you just, and, and for some of you, I have to say this, for some of you, because you've been independent for so long, so right now you may be single, and this is something you have to be mindful of when you get in the position, some of you are already in that position, but if you've been independent for so long, you are so accustomed to just doing things on your own, which is understandable, but you have to realize that relationships thrive on interdependence, not independence, okay? It's we have to be able to lean on each other and come together. And yes, it's going to take a very conscious effort by someone who's so used to doing it on their own. And I would say the same exact thing to a man. Like, I don't, I don't think this is a one-sided thing where it's just the woman that has to do this. No, I believe everyone needs to understand this because the more we feel like we're a team together, and let me just throw in there, we can be a team and still have a leader. All right, don't confuse the two. I know some of y'all believe in this co-leadership thing. We'll say that for a different video. But the bottom line is there is still an element. We still have to feel like a team, okay? We still have to be a cohesive unit that's in alignment and moving together in the same direction. And so consulting with each other, sharing with each other is going to be very helpful in that way. But I also have to say this. If any of you have the rebuttal, that, well, I'm not trying to get his opinion because, Lord forgive me, he's too stupid <laughs> to, to give me proper input. I know I can't trust what this man says. I know I can't let him guide me. He's going to run me off a cliff. Let me say this. If that's the case, why are you with him? If, if, if he's that incapable, I was going to use some other words, if he's that incapable of being helpful in those ways. Now, and in fairness, listen, if that genuinely works for you and him, and he ain't got no problems with that, who am I to tell you you shouldn't continue, right? If it's honestly, if you have harmony despite those things, so be it. But if it is causing a problem, then ignoring it and just trying to move forward and just doing things your own way isn't going to make things better. Either we figure out how we can solve that or improve upon that, or we come to an agreement on how we're going to handle things, or we understand that maybe we're dealing with the wrong person. Outside of that, getting his opinion, including him in, in the process of you know, getting things done and getting things fixed, is a great way to make him feel valued, needed, and desired. All right, now before we get to the next one, real quick, um, if you want one of my books, you want coaching, you want tickets to my live events, whatever it is, go to stephanspeakshop.com where you can see all the options available to you. You can click the link in the description or in the comment section and take advantage of it ASAP, all right? Now, the next thing on this list of what you can do to make a man feel desired is to show appreciation. So I always say appreciation breeds production, okay? Meaning when someone feels appreciated, they, they're willing or they desire to do more of what you're showing appreciation for. However, when that appreciation is not there, it can start to fall to the wayside but for some people. I think one of the very dangerous mindsets that both a man and woman can have towards their partner is the mindset of, well, they're supposed to do that, okay? I honestly, I have to use the word despise, <laughs> despise that mindset. Because here's the reality. No one has to do nothing, okay? Like, anytime someone is doing a good gesture of holding things down or whatever the case may be, they are choosing to do the right thing. And the problem is if we get into the mindset of, well, they're supposed to do that, then naturally you're not going to show appreciation for those things. You are not going to give off the right energy when it comes to how they're showing up for you in that relationship. But when you treat everything as a choice that they're making to do right by you, it is easier to then remember to 
walk in gratitude, walk in appreciation to show love. So I really think if you have that mindset, you got to start shifting it. Okay, you got to start shifting it and understanding they are making an effort to pour into you the right things. Also understand that showing appreciation can vary with different people. So it's important, and we're going to get more into that in a second, but it's important that you understand how he likes to feel appreciated. Okay, because what one guy may feel appreciated by, the next guy won't. So you have to have that discussion with him. And same thing as far as letting him know what makes you feel appreciated. Because I think a lot of relationships fail because of misunderstandings and and assumptions being made that this person should know such and such. When no, you never told them. And and this idea that you shouldn't tell them is, is honestly very unhealthy, all right, and not helpful in any kind of way. So we have to sit down and have those types of discussions. But... Yes, you have to make an effort to show appreciation for all of his efforts. And and if you have to, I think it's important for for everyone to understand. Because let's face it, in in life, things happen and we start to forget. We start to get comfortable sometimes. And by nature, we may start to slack off with doing certain things. Okay, And so I think it's important for you to understand if this is something that might be a struggle for you to remember then create structure, okay? So if, and what I mean, and yes, this may sound silly to some, but I'm, I just really think this is worth it and a good idea. If you got to create a, an appreciation day, all right? Like if you got to create a once a month day where you just shower him with love and appreciation to make sure that he never goes f- feeling unfulfilled, then, then do that, right? The same way some people have a date night, per week. It's a structure in place to ensure or to to make it less probable of them falling off from doing the things they enjoy. There's nothing wrong with that. Because once you start introducing kids and different factors, yes, it's easy for this day to go by. You forgot to do this and that day to go by. And the next you know, it's months, it's years. and, And we see a relationship going the wrong way because we let things get away from us. So create Whatever structure is necessary. If you got to, like I've I've told men before, if you got to schedule in your calendar random dates to do something nice for your wife, for your woman, for whoever, do that. Whatever it takes to make sure it's getting done, do it. Because if you leave it up to just remembering, you probably won't. So same thing for you as a woman. Maybe just scheduling random dates in your calendar as a reminder to do something special, nice, and show appreciation to your man. That will go a super long way. All right, so got a couple more to go. And this next one, we were just kind of alluding to it. Let's get to it. The other thing, other way you can show that man or how to make him feel desired is by specifically tapping into his needs and desires, okay? So one of the big problems I come across is people, people just projecting onto their partner what they think they should like. So let me just give a a general example, and I'm going to use men doing things for a woman. There are some men who just automatically think every woman loves flowers, right? And maybe the last couple girls he was with love flowers, and so he continues to do this with his new woman. Now, though the new woman may appreciate the gesture, she may not really care for flowers. You see what I'm saying? And so that whole flower thing is just falling flat. And it doesn't do for her what he thinks it's doing for her. And and some people, unfortunately, get frustrated and annoyed by the person, by by essentially this action not garnering a certain reaction from them, by by it not giving them, getting them what they thought they were going to get from this person out of it. And it's like, yo, you, you can't be mad at them when you never took time to understand what they actually like, what they actually needed. So flipping it back, same thing. Sometimes a lot of women just assume and project onto this man general ideas where, where yes, there are some... I think it's good to come in with a general understanding of what the typical man may like, but always leaving a lot of room, not a little room, but a lot of room for flexibility and understanding that you still have to learn this man, 
this specific man and what's important to him. And I think women underestimate how much men do not experience a woman who's truly trying to tap into his needs and desires, who is even going to ask him what he truly wants. And then not, if, if you ask this man what he wants, and let's just say he says some wild stuff, because let's face it, a lot of times you ask a man what he wants, he might say something sexual, right? And let's just say that sexual thing is not your cup of tea. Here's the thing. I'm not going to tell you that you need to go do it just because he, he said that's what he wanted. But I also don't want you flipping out on him or making him feel some kind of way or talking down or shaming him for him desiring something that just doesn't work for you. If anything, maybe this is a sign, especially if there's more to it than just that one thing, maybe this is a sign of we're not really best for each other. Or this is an opportunity to have a deeper discussion and let's explore what other possible wild things this man is really wanting. And if you're not able or willing to do those things for him, what impact will that have on the relationship? It's like, okay, because there's some guys who, yeah, they would love X, Y, Z, but they're not deal breakers. and they're not, they're not, It's not going to make the man want to go step out on his woman. For some men, not getting those things are going to cause a major problem. And it's best that you know that as soon as possible so we don't waste each other's time, okay? So have that discussion and yes, be willing to tap into his specific needs and desires. All right, so we're gonna count this, this one as a bonus that I wanna throw in there. I actually had a couple more I was gonna do, but I'm just gonna bring it down to this one thing, this one bonus, all right? So the other thing that you can do to make your man feel desired is to look good for him, all right? Now, I know for some of y'all, um, you may not like that. You may, you may have the perception or the belief that it's not about looking good for your partner, it's about looking good for yourself and, and all these different things, and I, I understand it. However, if we're not, if we're gonna be in a relationship, we have to understand that yes, it's about embracing the other person's needs and desires. And why wouldn't we want to look good for the person that we genuinely care about, love, desire to be with, or are, are already married to? Like, to me, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy to, 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 to dismiss this or to devalue this aspect and act like it shouldn't be important, especially when the reality, whether someone ex wants to accept it or not, is that attraction played a huge role on how we got there or how we will get to that point. Plain and simple, okay? Now granted, attraction encompasses a lot of different things. It's not just the physical, but the physical plays a role. To some people, it's a greater extent. To others, to a lesser extent. But I would argue to everyone, there is some extent of it, okay? So with that said, yes. I think being mindful, and I'm even going to use the word respectful, of the other person's attraction to us and what sustains that, I think is something that we should be willing to tap into. And I, and I have to say, I think people who underestimate or try to, to dismiss this, many of them, I'm not going to say all, but many of them, I argue maybe even most of them, they don't realize how they are self-sabotaging their relationship. They don't understand how there are so many relationships and marriages that have gone downhill and people are fighting about the current on the surface issue, right? But the root issue was it started with a loss of attraction. That's just the reality. But, but people feel they're not allowed to pinpoint or to identify that as a problem because then you're shamed into your shallow or your this or your that or you're supposed to love them more than all these different things but it doesn't change the reality of it. So all, going back to my original point, it's, I think it's in, if you want to make a man feel desired, you know, really asking him what, what he likes, you know, what he likes to see you in, all these different things. Now again, None of this means do things that you are truly uncomfortable with. Do things that go against your values and, and, and morals or anything like that. 
Because if it, if those if what he's requesting goes against that, then again, that just is probably the sign that you guys are not in alignment with each other and should go your own separate ways. But if it's not a problem otherwise, why not do it? Why not do it? You know, and view it as I'm pouring into my partner, I'm pouring into his relationship, and I'm making him feel wanted and desired because he knows I would do this for him. And I think that's a beautiful thing. It's a powerful thing. And it's something that will help you experience healthier and happier relationships. Thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on prepare to receive your future husband by doing these seven things. Because some of you know, some of you know that if you start sleeping with a man, that changes the whole dynamic for you. And it's going to be a lot more difficult. All right?